Well, I don't know what it is about these Magnavox ZV-427MG9s. I don't know if I find them or if they find me. But I have another one. This one is from a customer in Oregon. And the problem is, I don't know if you can see the power light over here or not. Okay, so with the lights down, we'll hit power. And then almost exactly 13 seconds later, it shuts down. This reminds me of the one that was shipped into me from Georgia to repair, doing almost the exact same thing. So this one does have a part taped to the top of it. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's under a piece of tape. It's a little piece of white plastic that's broken off of something. I'm like I said, I'm not quite sure what, but there it is in there. Anyhow, there's the unit opened up, ready to be troubleshot. Okay, so normally, if I break the beam of this prism, which is the infrared emitter, and so if I break that beam, the unit should turn on and try to accept a tape. And it does absolutely nothing. I'll hit the power button. The cylinder motor tries to run. The loading motor actually tries to run it. It seems like the mechanism might be jammed up. So because the loading motor runs on this one, let's try it one more time. Maybe I can tilt it up where you can see it. Oh, it's trying to run, but look at that belt. I don't know if the belt's just glazed. Oh, look at that down in there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the belt is off of the pulley. Maybe that's all it is. Maybe the belt's just off the pulley. We need to put it back on. Uh, the belt looks pretty used. Maybe we should uh, try to clean and deglaze it with a little bit of acetone. So I'm just going to try to finagle the belt out of here if I can, if I can get it past the take up sensor get it to peel off there we go well let's do the snap test and it should snap like a rubber band oh that looks good all right so some acetone I'm gonna wet my paper towel really good and I'm just gonna put the belt in it fold the paper towel over and we'll just drag it through a few times rotate it Well, other than the shape that the belt's in from sitting for such a long time, it's in really good condition. It's uh, very grippy now. It's, uh, it's not slippery at all. I'll try to get in here and clean the motor pulley groove with acetone and a cotton swab, as well as the loading groove down here. Try to clean that so it has a good grip. So now to clean the uh, pulley on the loading motor, it's really quite easy. You just power the unit up. A little bit off there, not too terribly bad. The other one down here, going to be a little bit harder. Alright, got quite a bit off. We'll get one more cotton swab in here. Get the other end moistened up. So I'm scrubbing up and down, and then I'm going to rotate the pulley very slightly. Keep scrubbing. Just keep scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. I've got quite a bit more off there. Alright, let's try to get the belt back on the pulley without getting it over here in the mechanism where there might be a little bit of grease. All right, got it back on. Power the unit up. 
Oh, I saw movement in the mechanism. That's very good. Well, I've got an old tape here. Let's just go ahead and put the tape in it and see if it tries to load it before I do anything else. Well, that's not good. It's trying to load. Auto head cleaning is in the way. It's jamming it up. Yeah, this auto head cleaner is uh, right in the way. There, I think it was just out of position. Let's try it again. Much better. All right. Well, let's hit play and see if it actually takes the tape up and plays for more than a few seconds. So far, so good. All right, so let's stomp it and eject it and see if it winds the tape back in and gives it back. Ooh, it doesn't want to give it back. That's not good. Well, manually I got the tape out of it. Okay, so I popped the front off the unit and I think I see why the tape does not want to eject. So I'm just gonna pop this cover off the carriage mechanism. And then usually this can be kinda finagled out And yes, this should not move freely. So there should be a tab that engages into a gear over here on the side or into a sliding lever. And it is not there. So I'm going to have to pull this out of here and see if we can get to the bottom of it. I think I have somewhere buried around here a donor machine that I may be able to steal this out of to get this customer's unit up and working, so I'll find out. Okay, so let's take the DVD mechanism out of it to gain access. One screw back here on the HDMI connector, and then there are four screws that hold the mechanism into place. And then we only need to unplug these two connectors right here. They go from the DVD mechanism back down to the main board and then the mechanism can normally just be lifted up and very carefully out. Sometimes the power cord hangs up and there it's completely free. And I've zoomed in a little bit, so look what I see right there. Look at that capacitor, a little bit of electrolyte and the top is slightly domed on it, a little bit bulged. So there's the top of it, as compared to the capacitor next to it. Nothing, here's the main uh, filter cap right here. Looks perfectly fine. Probably should go ahead and ESR that capacitor just to see what the state of affair actually is with it. Okay, well it's gonna be kinda of hard to see on video, but to release this bar right here, which couples the two sides together, there's a spring tab. It's made of plastic, you have to push it back like that and then the bar should actually lift out so I'm going to push that back and then that bar lifts out and so this is completely free now now these sides can actually be taken out there is a screw on this side which I've already removed and it can be removed out and then we can see right there where the broken piece of plastic actually came from. So I'm gonna to try to find my donor machine and see if I have one of these and if it's in respectable shape so we can get this machine back up and running for this customer. Okay, well here's the difference. As you can see, that is the piece that was taped up on top of the unit. So I got the piece out of my donor unit. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it into this one 
and hopefully that'll take care of the problem and we can make this a happy Magnavox Funai VCR DVD unit once again. Okay, so now as you can see, the unit stops where it should. So if I go ahead and try to run the loading motor forward, it should actually load and completely push this down. And then this is what actually accepts the tape in and pushes it down and then lifts the tape up and brings it back out. So let's go ahead and try to do that by hand. Okay, so now we'll put a tape in it, and I'll try to run it forward by hand and see if it accepts the tape. And it does, and it pulls the tape all the way down so it's tight. So now let's see if it will eject the tape. All right, here we go. Very good, the tape is all the way down. Let's see if it will give it back now. Stop, eject. Perfect, totally awesome. Let's go ahead and give it a cleaning now. We'll go ahead and clean the entire tape path, the entrance tape guide, the full erase head, the entrance angle guide, the back tension arm, the exit angle guide, the heads, these two are the SP and EP heads. This one is the Hi-Fi head. And then 180 degrees around the SP and EP heads. The other Hi-Fi head. We'll clean the audio control and the full erase head, which is back here under this capacitor. The tape guide, the cap stand, the pinch roller, and the exit tape guide. Okay, so the entire tape path is clean at this point. Next, we'll go ahead, pull the top off the DVD mechanism and clean the optical pickup. So we'll go ahead and remove these three screws. I already have the screw out from behind here that secures the HDMI connector. Go ahead and unplug these two connectors. Now just simply take this board and fold it over. I do not want to unplug this connector right here. This is where the optical pickup plugs in. And the reason I don't want to unplug that is because it's a highly ESD damageable item. Electrostatic discharge. We'll take that one screw loose. Move this up out of the way. Next, we just release these tabs. There's four of them. And then this cover can be just taken off. Let me move this so you can actually see it and I'll zoom in on it so you can get a good close up view of the optical pickup. Okay, so here's the optical pickup. You can certainly see a lot of dust on it, especially if I bring the flashlight over and shine it on the optical pickup at an angle. Look at how much dust is on there. So let's go ahead and give that a cleaning. So I have my cotton swab just moistened here and what I'm gonna do is clean in a circular motion. Very, very light pressure while I'm rotating the cotton swab. And then the same thing when I dry it off. Very light pressure. 
rotating the cotton swab to always have a clean surface against the lens. Now we'll take a peek with the flashlight. Certainly looks much better. Next, pop the top back on it. Make sure this tab in the front goes under that little lip right there. Bring the board back over. We'll remount the board, but first we have to put on this little metal bracket that allows the board to mount to it. Okay, I've got it all mounted. Got the ground clips back on it here. Next, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the whole mechanism out because I haven't bolted it down yet. So it should just lift out of here. We'll pull the power supply out and probably change that capacitor. I don't know if there's any more. I'll go ahead and ESR all the major caps on here. Probably not the little ones because it appears to be working just fine. So let's go ahead and ESR those capacitors, even though that one does have a small leak and it is bulged. Uh, it may actually check okay, but I'll probably go ahead and replace it anyhow just to be safe. 3300 at 6.3. All right, so I've got my ESR meter. I'm checking lead integrity, zero ohms. So I'm just going to go ahead and check these capacitors on the board. First, I'm going to check the pad, and it reads about 10 ohms and I'll check the lead of the capacitor and we're at zero perfect the pad nothing the lead zero perfect the pad zero the capacitor lead just shy of zero so we'll get back to that one there's the pad there's the lead just shy of zero All right, so that one tests just over three ohms. Oh, and that is the one that has the leak. That one is bad. That's a 3300 microfarad, 6.3 volt. Don't know if you can see it there on the camera, 3300, 6.3. So it definitely does test bad, so let's go ahead and uh, I'll see if I have a suitable replacement for that. I may not have a 3300. I uh, may have to uh, find something to fit. So let's see what I got in stock. All right, so I don't have a 3300 at 6.3, but I do have a 3300 at 10. But unfortunately, it's a little bit too tall because if I lay it down on the board, it's about three or four millimeters taller than the main filter cap and I know that's a problem in these units because the DVD mechanism sits right directly above this but luckily I think there's enough room that I can lay it flat on the circuit board and I think it'll be okay right there so let's go ahead and uh, remove this capacitor and replace it with this 3300 to 10 I'll lay it flat on the board okay so I have my capacitor leads bent down I'm just going to add some hot glue I've added a little insulator over that jumper right there to keep it safe. Just going to put a glob of hot glue there. Then we'll add the capacitor and let it cure. Okay, now we'll go ahead and reinstall it back in the unit and we'll give it a final test. All right, here we go. Let's pop a tape in it, a homemade tape from 1986.
All right. It's playing just fine. Will it give it back? Let's find out. Yep. No problem. Let's head over and take a look at the monitor. All right, well there it is, the VHS tape playing, absolutely fine. It's got a good picture, good sound. Let's go ahead and pop a DVD into it right now and see if we get the same results. Stop, switch it over to DVD. Okay, it read the disc. Let's go ahead and hit play. Well, there it is playing. The VHS works, the DVD works. Another successful repair, as opposed to a couple of those successful failures that I had previously. So I certainly want to give a sincere thank you to those who have supported my channel with a donation via PayPal, or by having me repair your unit like this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.